before the bag? Let me tell you. As most of you probably know already, I got invited to join the Prodigy Street team this year. And uh, as part of that, I do have to switch over to an all Prodigy bag with uh, COVID causing delays in production and shipping. And then also with the explosion of the sport this year, it's being so popular that um, it's been, we've been waiting quite a while to get our team packs, but happy to say that my team pack is coming this Friday. I'm super, super excited. And I kind of just wanted to share why I'm so excited. Uh, so. Here's my before the bag. I started disc golf in the late 90s, and if you want to know the full story on that, you can watch the video, Who Is This Guy? My first disc I got back in probably 96 to 98, I got a Comet. I followed that up probably a year later, the Magnet. Maybe a year later, I got a T-Bird. And then I used my little homemade bag. This was what I used to golf with for 20 years. Before I had my awakening of uh, 2019, uh, that's when I got a couple aces on one round of golf and it just made me want to learn more and that's when I started actually learning about disc golf instead of just chucking my plastic around. Uh, up until that point I had graduated to having five discs in here. That's all I had for the first over 20 years of my disc golfing. The Comet remained a staple in my bag forever until just recently I was learning about more discs and just learning about stability and speed and everything and started experimenting with other discs and found some other discs that had a little slightly nicer hand feel than that for me but that was my first bag. started learning some stuff and I thought hey I'm gonna go online find out what is the best driver ever. Came up with two options. Came up with a Katana and a Boss. And so I ordered them and I got them. Can't throw them. Don't work for me. <laughs> don't have the arm speed for it. So that led me to learn about speed and that uh, had me then get down to more mid-range discs knowing that I don't have the arm speed to throw the higher speeds. I just started thinking of the speed as my rank and my rank was definitely not 13. So I went online onto Amazon looking for something mid-range, saw this buzz and saw this picture and went, I need to have that. Ordered this disc. Oh, what a nice hand feel. And I could throw it. It actually flew for me. So then ended up buying a bunch of buzzes and that was my first time experiencing experimenting with plastics so I got the buzz in every plastic that I could find in Discraft. Throughout all of that just as I was getting into that addiction of buying all those buzzes I saw this pack online an ace pack I had never heard of it at the time uh, and then I, I looked up and I'm like oh it's Prodigy is that a real company I didn't even know at the time so I had to look that up and then I found out oh that is good all right, and so this came with a P model, an M model, an F model. At first, I have to say, Ace Line Base Grip, I did not like this plastic at first. I opened the box and I was like, oh, is this a toy? Is this real? But one thing that is for sure is that I ended up loving my P model. This P model I've had now since June of 2020. And I have to say that uh, it may have changed the way I play disc golf, getting this disc. I was skeptical on the plastics, but I thought, hey, I'm going to go out and give that a try. And uh, I threw the P model on the very first throw. I fell in love. I've had a P model in my bag ever since. Uh, that P model in particular, that very first one's beat in really nice, holds a drift really well. Uh, ended up getting a Duraflex, awesome Duraflex one. And I've also now started putting with the, the P model. You could say that uh, I like P models. It's... I... I, I can't stop saying enough good things about this disc. It uh, has a glide for days. It's the best approach disc I've ever thrown. And uh, if you don't have a P model, you need to get a P model. It's simple as that. So when I got offered the sponsorship with Prodigy, I was very excited because at that point, the P model had already become my favorite disc. So it was exciting. But at that point, all I had were my two P models, the original one, that Duraflex one with the eyeball on it and uh, these two that came with my uh, first ace starter pack. Like I said, at first I didn't like these, but I got sponsors, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna just go out with just my ace line bag with just my Prodigy discs and start throwing them. And I guess after all of the research into 
figuring out how to throw and to learn and actually learning how to throw, I found out that these discs are actually pretty good and I can actually use them. Uh, I've gotten this one beat in pretty nice now and it holds a line for me. So I actually like these discs now and they actually go in here. So my uh, ones that need to replace are that uh, original beautiful buzz. My wife bought me a, a pack of putters, the zone being one of them. Hated it for putting. And I was still in the mindset of, uh, I don't throw putters until I got that P model. And then I started throwing this and wow, did I fall in love with throwing a zone. I didn't even know. So I knew I needed to replace that. Uh, I got a wedge. It's tough to replace. It's really, really slow, super understable slow speed disc. I mainly am a mid range kind of guy and I like understable discs. I'm hoping that I can get hands on an M5. Now with the pack that I have coming from Prodigy, I know of some of the discs I'm getting. Uh, I didn't get to pick an M5. I'm hoping that it's one of the mystery discs I get because I like understable mid-ranges. I also like overstable mid-ranges. <laughs> but here's another understable, I like that. Uh, I had a Rhino, that's my main approach disc I was using. Uh, I like the low speed, low glide. Um, and then I've never really had much arm speed just developing it now but these were my staples in my bag for as far as drivers went uh, i had a mantis which is one of the first ones that i got and was able to actually throw because it's a little bit understable i used my undertaker actually as a stability overstable uh, i know i can't turn it over because i don't have the arm speed that's changed it's no longer that anymore but then i had my under toe which uh was my main long distance driver because had a little bit under stability so my first foray into buying some discs i tried to get some replacements for those uh my good friend mitchell gave me this pa4 which i've been using as my rhino replacement i know it's not a rhino it doesn't have anywhere close to the same flight numbers but there's something about the way it's working for me so that's my, been my rhino <laughs> this m model os that i've gotten beat in has become my uh comet <laughs> because it's so beat in. It's supposed to be overstable, but it's so beat in now that uh, it turns over for me. And so that's my understable. Uh, my uh, F model has kind of taken over as my undertaker. Um, it's still somewhat stable, but I can get it going pretty good and straight. And then to replace the zone, I originally got an A2. Found that to be a little overstable. I still keep it as utility. But then I got the A3, and the A3, although it does not feel like the zone, the A2 has hand feel like a zone, the A3 performs like a zone for me. And so with my new pack, I'm going to be getting the A3 in every single plastic. That was part of the thing that I ordered, so that I can compare that. That's going to be like my buzz experiment. I'm going to be able to have one mold, all the plastics, I can compare directly to see how the, how the plastics affect it, how it affects me, what I like, what I don't like, uh, because I'm still new to all this. Bought an MX-3 just because I saw it and I was like, I'm gonna get that. I didn't really have a plan for it. I didn't research that one. That was a spur of the moment buy. Uh, it turns out to be a really good, uh, for me, pretty stable mid-range. We'll see what else I end up getting and see if that stays in the bag. I've got my custom DGB M3, of course. Uh, this one in particular, I've already gotten an Ace with. I love this disc. It's uh, kind of my buzz replacement. It's a little more stable than my Super Color Buzz. My Super Color Buzz is a little understable for a buzz. It went nice and straight, but this is basically like an ESP buzz. That's what works for me. Um, kind of like a compass, maybe. But M3, uh, this is becoming one of my favorite discs very rapidly. M4 turned out to be a lot more stable than I thought it was. But uh, yeah, so far so good. I thought, I like that F model. I'm getting some pretty good distance with this. I'll, let me get the F model US. But I got it in Duraflex and it's not beat in at all. It's actually more stable than my F model S. Uh, I was thinking maybe that'll be like a, a Mantis. But I haven't found anything like a Mantis yet. So I'm looking forward to getting my player pack, which has, uh, instead of the Ace line, has some actual F series. And I'm getting an F7, F5, I think an F3 uh, going understable. And I'm gonna find the one I want. I got this to replace the undertow, and it's almost the undertow. I'm super happy with it, liking that so far. Uh, I'm going to get into more of what I'm using all these discs for when I do my actual in the bag, which will be coming out after I've gotten my box, do an unboxing video, do a little field testing video, 
play with on my disc for a month or so and then I'll do a proper in the bag where I can let you know what I'm actually using them for. I ordered the D2 because it's the D2 and it's popular and Kevin Jones got the big ace with it and it's like a flagship disc kind of thing so I thought I gotta get a D2. I didn't expect to be able to throw it because I don't have very much arm speed and I'm like okay well this is like getting into really high speed disc territory here for me but uh, it turns out I can and I like it. Um, and then so because of that it made me get the D model US because these are the discs that I could get a hold of, so I could try. Um, and uh, turns out that uh, I can throw this one too, and I really like it. It's a pretty good disc, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what else I'm getting. I'm exclusively putting with a P model now, and I've been finding that it's a little too stable for me sometimes. Just because of the old putter I used to use was a, a magnet, it's a little more understable, and so I'm having to focus a lot on giving it a little bit of any in the pop and if I don't focus on that it, it fades out on me so I'm thinking I really want to try the US so I'm really hoping that that's going to be in there too so all of you that have watched this video will know why I'm excited about certain discs that are coming out in the box that I'm getting I'm also looking forward to replacing my bag I've got this good old Athletico bag that's worked for me for a long time uh, it's a good $50 bag. I had to make some modifications to it to make it work for me, but it's a good bag. Uh, I can't wait to get my new BP1 V3 though. That's going to be exciting. Uh, I can't wait to have a proper prodigy bag and not one that I've spray painted myself. The rec pack I got to choose, so I know of some of the discs I'm getting, but I'm getting a whole bunch of mystery discs as well, so I'm super, super excited about that. I can't wait to try out all my discs, build my new bag, so hopefully you'll join me for the unboxing and the experimenting with the discs and the final build of the bag. Hope you'll join me on that journey, and I'll see you out there. <laughs>